You're watching Southern Television, where at six o'clock, the day-by-day -day team take us day by yesterday. First of all, time to go over to ITN for the latest national and international news. The news at 5.45 with Leonard Parkin. Well, that's it so far today and for another year from News at 5.45. From all of us here on the News at 5.45 team, a very happy new year to you all. And we'll be back tomorrow. For now, goodbye. Good evening and goodbye. Well, not quite yet. For although this is Day by Day's last programme, we've at least got an hour to ourselves again tonight. And we're going to spend that hour not at a spirit of regretful parting, but we hope with a touch of humour and a little nostalgia. Chris. And if you're worried about his voice, don't worry. He's not simply overcome by the emotion of it all. He does have a very heavy cold, don't you, Cliff? Yeah, if it's been one more day, I'd have lost my voice altogether. Right. Just caught Say it no on more. the hop. Say no more. The show goes on. <laughs> Neither of us was uh, actually here when Day by Day first started on April 4th, 1961. But I've worked for Day by Day now for 10 years, man and boy. And some of the items we've got for you tonight will show that quite a few boys have got, well, just a little bit older over the years. As most of you will know, Day by Day is ending in about an hour's time because tonight is the last night of transmissions by Southern Television. The Independent Broadcasting Authority made that decision last December. Things may change, in fact they will change tomorrow, but we're going to enjoy ourselves in the next hour and again later on in the evening with a special farewell programme to bring in the new year. About three weeks ago, the people who work here at Southern Television had their final Christmas dinner dance. Now, at that dinner, our chairman David Wilson summed up the feelings of most of us in one sentence. A fine company. A very fine company. We hope this program will prove his point. We'll be looking back at the highlights of Southern Television. We'll be looking forward to 1982, when Wurzel Gummidge and Porter Cabin Television go legitimate. What's Porter Cabin Television? We'll let you in on that later. But first, let's start as we've normally started, catching up with the regional news from Peter Clark. Peter. A sub-postmaster and his wife were injured this afternoon in an attempted robbery at a post office in Sussex. Two men tried to rob the post office in Manor Road at Southwick. Police have set up roadblocks throughout Sussex in the search for the raiders who got away in a maroon Austin 1100. 500 jobs at a Newbury engineering factory could be at risk because of President Reagan's decision to impose economic sanctions against Russia over the Polish crisis. Preston Witz now reports. Last week, the Plenty Engineering Company announced they clinched a £20 million contract with the Soviet Union. The deal involved supplying equipment for the world's longest pipeline, taking gas 3,000 miles across Russia from northern Siberia to the European border. Winning the contract meant job security for all 500 workers, a year after mounting losses led to the resignation of Plenty's boss and the laying off of dozens of skilled workers. But now President Reagan has suspended the sale of American equipment for the pipeline and has called on his Western allies to follow yeah. suit. A spokesman for Plenty's said the company were watching the situation closely to see if the British government heeded the president's request for support by stepping in to halt the deal. A woman of 79 has died in an accident with an electric fire at Reading. Her badly burned body was discovered by a friend who called at the woman's home in Norcott Road at Tilehurst. A man was rescued semi-conscious from a fire in a block of flats at Brighton during the night. And several other people living in the same flats in Brighton's Upper Rock Gardens were led to safety by firemen. Police are investigating the possibility that it could have been started deliberately. The Royal Navy's rescue helicopters, based at Leon Solent in Hampshire, flew a record 187 missions this year. 
That's 12 more than the previous record set in 1979. They saved 86 lives, ranging from yachtsmen to children on airbeds. The airmen say they could save even more people if everybody going to sea wore a life jacket. Sussex police are to hold an internal inquiry into the death of a village bobby who was killed when his patrol car smashed into a tree near Petrith on November the 21st. It follows the inquest on PC Dennis O'Leary, who was stationed at Lodsworth in West Sussex. The inquest heard that the 32-year-old constable had drunk punch and beer and brandy after going on duty that day. Along the coast of Dorset, clearing up has begun after the damage caused by yesterday's storms. At Boscombe in Bournemouth, which experienced some of the worst weather, council workers have been trying to repair the promenade. Beach huts were damaged in the storms, which also closed the road for a time. A lorry driver appeared in court at Brighton today, accused of imprisoning his former girlfriend at his flat. Raymond Chadwick, who's 35 and lives in Cavendish Place at Brighton, was also charged with assaulting her. He was remanded in custody for a week. In the New Year's Honours list, there have been many awards to people living in the South, and here's Roger Livingstone with those details. Perhaps the most famous to be honoured is Steve Ovet from Brighton, the Olympic middle distance runner who gained medals at Moscow. He got the MBE. The Chief Constable of Sussex, Mr George Terry, is knighted. He was Chief Constable of the former East Sussex Police Authority in 1965 and has held his present position for 12 years. He's been invol involved in improvements to police training and drink driving laws and was recently in the news for plans to put more bobbies back on the beat in Sussex. Elizabeth Frink from Dorset, the noted sculptress, becomes a dame. Again in Dorset, the county's chief education officer, Mr Roy Price, receives the CBE. In West Sussex, the chief fire officer, Mr Robert Blackburn, gets the OBE. And in Wiltshire, Miss Joan Lloyd, lately secretary of the Wiltshire Blind Association, receives the MBE. At Poole in Dorset, fishermen are still bringing home near record catches of sprats and it's got to such a stage that they've been forced to offer them on the quayside to passers-by because there's nowhere else to sell them. Some trawlers are managing to take up to 10 tonnes of fish a day. The going rate today, 50 pence for a large bag, which is considerably cheaper than the price in the shops. British Telecom have confiscated the transmitter of a pirate radio station which has been broadcasting in Salisbury for the last four months. Castle Radio used to broadcast on Sundays to an estimated audience of 3,000. The part-time disc jockeys who ran the station say they hope to get back on the air in the near future. Plans to double the length of the Bluebell railway line in Sussex have received the unanimous backing of the Chamber of Commerce at East Grinstead. The owners of the line want to extend the five and a half miles from their existing terminus at Horsted Keynes to the British Rail Station at East Grinstead. Mid-Sussex District Council have opposed the idea, which will be discussed at a public inquiry. Now it's back to those two. Thank you very much indeed, Peter. Well, Chris, you've been around for a long time, and day by day, as I said, have been around for, what, 21 years. There's an awful lot of bulletins. Has anyone got any idea how many? Not really. It's an awful lot of words. But I do know, or I think I know, that this is the 5,214th programme. And in that time, give or take a couple of feet, we've used up something like 30 million feet of film. That's about 6,000 miles, which, if laid from end to end, would reach all the way to San Francisco. I've always wanted to know yes. that. Yes. <laughs> Useless information. We've also interviewed something like 10,000 people, some pretty famous ones too, Cliff. Well, it all started back on April the 4th, 1961, in the days when everything was either black or white, including the film. But the people we were interested in then, as now, were colourful to say the least, as James Montgomery found when he delved back into the film archives. Why do you like Day by Day, sir? Well, uh, I like it uh, because it's, I get all my local news, it's topical, right up to the moment. The weather report, I think, is really good. I like the people, they're so friendly. I just enjoy watching it. I like Day by Day because there's something on different every evening. Day by Day was born on April the 4th, 1961. Its first producer, the now internationally acclaimed film director, John Borman. OK, well, look, we're doing it in the studio, and um, we're recording, we're getting away by 4 o'clock. The programme's look may have changed with different producers since those early days, but we've stayed with his fundamental and successful combination of news, information, entertainment, communication. In short, the people. Fire!
are you going to do about my road? Your what? Entitled Baton Rouge, this is described as a potpourri of rose petals. The model's umbrella also takes up this theme. Mr. Ballantyne? Yes? Why do you live in, in the backyard of your house? Well, I find it uh, very convenient in a, a position like this. Yes, the bird singing. Oh, the bird bird singing. Lovely. Oh, that's lovely. And uh, the present head girl and I will have a lot to say. Miss Hancock, thank you very much. I'll go and have a word with some of the girls now and see what they think of their new school. Well, it's quite different from being at home in Ireland because when I was at home in Ireland, I was taught by a governess. And it, but it's much more fun here at boarding school because there's more girls. I've heard you quoted as saying that you don't like Weymouth. Was this Weymouth oh, itself? Oh, no, I do like Weymouth. I didn't say I didn't like it. Oh, God, I, I thought you'd been misquoted. Oh, no, I love Weymouth. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, it's marvellous. Uh, why have you stopped, Mr. Dawson? The, it stopped, Mr. Lee Carroll. I don't know what's wrong. I think this bag's burst. Day by day was born with the swinging 60s. There for the first ever pirate radio station with Screaming Close, Lord no. Such. In fact, the birth of the scream. <laughs> well, how are you going to spend this Christmas, do you think? Well, we're going to try and get home to our parents if we can. If they're there. <laughs> well, if they're there, <laughs> if they're there. <laughs> Now, what about the new year? I believe there's a trip to America in store. Is that right? Yes, we're going in January. February. I don't know why I'm going, actually, but we are going. February. February. Then we'll come back and, and they say, have you been to America? We'll say, we've been to America, haven't we? He's acting now, he's yes. And then they'll ask what you thought about America, but I can't ask you that now, she hasn't been yet. No, I haven't been. Because we're all going. Why do you want to be a pop singer? Oh, I've always wanted to sing. I love singing. How did you feel on your American tour, which after all is the home of rhythm and blues? Well, I don't know anything about it over there any more than they do over here. Even 20 years ago, Dickie Davis was never lost for words. I wonder where these kids are now. All the children exercise in a minimum of clothing and with bare feet. This is one of the basic principles of a system that teaches them to develop freely and absolutely naturally. And dozens of stars, too, played their part. The University of Southampton, whose students are having their rag week. And for the occasion they've adopted, yes, adopted, film star Susan Hampshire as their rag mascot. I'm enormously intrigued with the youth of the present generation and the youth of the present day. With their forthright enthusiasm and uh, the way they seize hold of life and must know about it. Life with a capital L. I enjoyed making Lolita very much. As I enjoy working with Stanley Kubrick. I've just finished working with him recently on Dr. Strangelove, which will be out, I suppose, to, at the end of the year. The point about these carry-ons is that the critics, they don't recognize art when they see it, you see. I mean, there's more to our acting than would meet the eye. It's said, has been said, that the, uh, uh, the saddest and loneliest existence is to be professionally funny. <laughs> really? Yes, it's been said. Oh, it's been yes, said. Yes, it's been said, yes. Mm. Yes, yes. And Pass. Now, and now Pass. Been... Three spades. You've been responsible for I'm just perhaps... inven inventing something. How does this look? <laughs> What's it supposed to be? Nothing. Oh, it's just an invention. Mind your own business. I can't I invent, <laughs> invent nose clips without being questioned. Hello, Gina. How are you feeling? Not very well, but better than yesterday. When film sets arrived, we were there. At Pool Harbour, for instance, in 1964. Well, Zeke, how are you? Rotten, stinking Nazi. <laughs> but you're not really a Nazi at all, are you? No. What are you? Uh, I'm British. I come from Bournemouth. We talked to many personalities on great liners, now gone. We filmed the Queen Elizabeth in Dry Dock. Almost a year's work in the Atlantic since her last overhaul. 
carrying millionaires, film stars, politicians. Yes, people change, fashions change. But the Lizzie stays just as she was in the 30s, and they intend to keep her that way. Well, I hear they reckon she'll be out of service in about 10 years' time. Whatever her future, whether she becomes a hotel sunk in concrete off the Devon coast or 50,000 tonnes of scrap metal, at least she's made a profit for her owners. We witnessed the end of mainline steam. We were beguiled by the late, great naturalist, Olly Kite. It shows you just what an effective lure an artificial ant can be at this particular time of the year, in these summer months. And this was a fish I felt that would meet with the approval of Butch the dog. And so, from him and me, goodbye. We, on this, the longest-running magazine programme in history, always knew that to run an effective current affairs service, we should make you our best friends, with a sense of humour. Some articles in here inside the booth got to be cleared out of the way. A lot, number of cameras, tape recorders, microphones got to be cleared. These are the very, very integrated equipment. Servigate all the way around. This is on the side, you see. Twin roll reflex all the way through to the pipe. Still, never mind. I've got an idea that next week we'll be back with yet another edition of Day by Day. Goodbye. Tony Bilbo on this very day in 1964. A fine reporter he could never have been expected to be a soothsayer. Well, he was right for the next 16 years anyway, and it's far better than old Trevor can ever manage, or some professional star stargazers come to that. Tony Bilbo was, of course, one of many people that you welcomed into your homes as presenters of Day by Day. You'll remember Barry Westwood, Julian Pettifer, Muriel Young, Kenneth Kendall, Martin Bunkester, and David Dickie Davis. But Wurzel Gummidge wasn't among them, although he became a national favourite through Southern Television. In a moment, how he and Porter Cabin Television are going legitimate in 1982. Change my washing power to change my children. No matter how much Carol Hope washed their football gear, she couldn't get a white she liked. So she tried Daz Automatic with the blue whitener in her Bendix Automatic. Putting her whites away, she decided to see how her new powder had done by doing a window test. First, she noticed how clean they were. Then she noticed the whiteness, a different bluey whiteness she really liked. Of course, with my dynamic duo, the whiteness won't last long, but at least with Daz Automatic, I can get the whiteness I like. Daz Automatic is designed for all automatics. Try it, then do your own window test. You'll notice a different whiteness you'll like. Finger licking, finger licking, finger licking chicken. Finger licking, finger licking, finger licking chicken. Have you tried to talk you fried chicken? It's finger licking. The Encyclopedia of Birds vividly brings to life every single bird seen in Britain and Europe. It describes their courting, breeding, nesting, and feeding habits, their migration patterns, their song characteristics. Week by week, all this information, beautifully illustrated in superb colour, builds into the most comprehensive work on British and European birds ever published. The Encyclopedia of Birds is on sale now with part two and this bird song record free. These days, everyone's trying to tempt you with their bargain offers. But when you know about good furniture pricing, go straight to courts. Especially now, at sale time when good value gets even better. Go straight to courts. January sale. It's on tomorrow, New Year's Day.
people who take a Thompson holiday just never want it to end. This is the final call for Britannia flight BY-3903 to Gatwick. With Thompson, it's always too soon to come home. company has been part of the fabric of life of the south of England for 24 years and Southern Television started operating back in 1958. It's by no means easy to say goodbye without a touch of some sadness. Indeed, we're trying to do so tonight and uh, Southern's chairman David Wilson faced the same challenge a month ago when Southern Television staff held their farewell dinner. Ladies and gentlemen, forgive me for interrupting your enjoyment of this meal for a minute or so, but this is the last time we shall all be together to say farewell to Southern Television. The company which has provided us with our livelihood uh, for many for the best years of their lives. Now, I am going to sing our praises a bit in due course. For over 25 years, Southern has been and still is a fine company. But we are to be killed off, having been condemned for 11 months in the condemned cell, for reasons we know, I think, far too little about. We have suffered and I mean we have suffered. The agony and shock of that decision on the 28th of December may now be passing. But there remains the rage, the bitterness, the sense of injustice for many of us, and that will not pass. But the sooner it's all over, now, so much the better. History may vindicate us, but there's little consolation in that at this present time. But let us remember our record with pride. And in years to come, when we look back and maybe reminisce together, let us think again on the good things we have done and the major contributions we have made to the success of independent television. For we have been a progressive, dedicated company with a panache and high standards. We've been a leader in a number of fields. I need not enumerate them now. They are known to you. But this I believe, in fact I know, we have provided a first-class regional service to our area, stimulating interest and providing enjoyment for millions of our viewers over the years. In addition, we have been a leader amongst the regional companies in providing major contributions to the national network, culminating in this very notable, the very notable successes we have achieved this year. I wonder how well did the authorities study our application, because it was all in that. Let us also not forget the major part that our sales staff have played in industry affairs. But that is now all in the past. Shortly, we will all go our various ways. For a few of us, it's the end of the road. But many will carry on the work in the region. Others will be scattered. But I know that they will carry Southern standards with them. Let us wish them every success. But enough. Do not let ourselves be downhearted tonight. Rather. Let us be merry and enjoy the company of the friends we have all made in the fellowship of Southern Television. But ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to stand if you would, and I would ask you to join with me in a toast to Southern Television, a fine company, a very fine company. The toast is Southern Television, a fine Thanks company, a very fine company. <laughs>
And so say all of us. Our chairman, David Wilson. Nevertheless, tomorrow it does all change. 1982 really is a new year so far as television in this part of the world is concerned. And as befits a program going out at the end of the old year, we thought that we ought to look forward to the new year. In a slightly irreverent way, Richard Stilgo looks forward to 1982 and the new company which will be responsible for the programs appearing on your screen from tomorrow morning. As you really know, their name, this firm that is waiting to take over, is Porter Cabin Television. <laughs> and to close with, here is a little song about them. We're part of cabin TV and we can't believe our luck to have got the bit from Channel to North Sea. To be frank, we thought the best would have been to go for Westwood or Yorkshire or even ATV. We are part of cabin TV, our approach is fresh and new. You won't see us making shows just cause they pay. There'll be no more three to one and crossroads we will shun. Well, at least for the first six months anyway. We are part of Cabin TV, Gatwood, Boston and Blackstad. And on January the 1st, our flags unfurl. Our future is assured. We've a lord upon the board and someone who once did to tomorrow's world. We are part of Cabin TV and the southeast of our patch is top of our list of priorities. It will be all systems go in our Maidstone studio just as soon as we find out where Maidstone is. We are part of Cabin TV and our paper's brown and cream, not that nasty southern TV white and blue. And we all say yours sincerely when we finish letters off. Hugs and kisses, Brian Izzard, just won't do. We are part of Cabin TV and we promise we will change everything so that all is new and vital. The show to all to most will be our nightly coast to coast, which is really day by day with a new title. We are part to Cabin TV and we're dropping lots of shows. I'm afraid to how we all must say goodbye. Because we don't know how, but we do know when it's now. And what people want to know is not how, but why. We are part of Cabin TV. And all that's going to change is the local television station's name. We would change things if we could, but Southern was so good. We've decided to leave everything the same. Could do worse, mind you, couldn't they? Christopher has been looking back at some of the awards given to Day by Day over the years, and on this occasion we make no apology for a little trumpet blowing. Friday, October the 23rd, 1970. A Mayday signal is flashed from Knighton Radio on the Isle of Wight. The Liberian oil tanker Pacific Glory erupts into a blazing inferno after colliding with another tanker eight miles off St. Catherine's Point. Fifteen members of the crew are missing, feared, drowned, and the stricken tanker seems on the brink of disgorging its 77,000 tonnes of crude oil, menacing south coast holiday beaches with a pollution threat on the scale of the Torrey Canyon disaster. Day by Day's team of news cameramen are there to record the event from the air and on the sea. For their coverage of the blaze, which was seen around the world, they earn a host of prizes, including the Best British Television News Film Award. For his aerial film of The Blaze, day-by-day -day cameraman Joe Hardy is made Film Cameraman of the Year. 
Four years on, he shares the team award with David Davis and John Mills for their work in filming A Fire on South Sea Pier. It was being used as a film set by Ken Russell for his rock opera Tommy when it caught fire. The blaze destroyed the Edwardian structure and it was later replaced with a brand new pier. 1976 is the year of the great drought. The new forest is like a tinderbox and firemen spend much of that long hot summer tackling major outbreaks. One Sunday in August, the unthinkable happens. A huge area is ringed by fire and caught in its path is an old people's hospital near Ringwood. The dramatic evacuation is filmed by our man on the spot, David Davis, and it wins for him the Cameraman of the Year Award, once again serving to show day by day's mastery of news film. But perhaps the most coveted honor of all goes to the entire day by day team in 1978. The Royal Television Society acknowledged the program to be the best of its kind in the country. Here's a light-hearted moment taken from the winning edition in which Brian Shalcross is musing in verse. So now we end an era and the times will be no more. We won't come down to breakfast as they pop it through the door. I think tomorrow morning when I sit down on the train, my journey up to London won't be quite the same. We travellers will be timesless. Other pastimes we will seek and who knows? Maybe one day we might all begin to speak. In 1980, another award comes our way, this time for the best news feature given for coverage of the arrival of the Vietnamese boat people at Sockley in Hampshire. This was the end of an agonizing journey that began several months ago when they made their dash for freedom from Vietnam. Undoubtedly, the refugees had never dreamed of anything like this. For weeks on end, they stared death in the face, cramped in small boats on the South China Seas, waiting for rescue. These are people who have had a rough time, such as few of us will ever be called on to endure. Day by Day has never set store by winning awards for the sake of it. The prizes were the icing on the cake. And best of all, serve to compliment the camera crews, those unsung heroes you rarely see but without whom, there would be no program. Southern Television has picked up many other decorations, among them documentary awards for sailing programs like the Round the World Yacht Race, our own Peter Clark for a police documentary, musical accolades for Glyndebourne Opera, and cups for countrymen like the late but still much loved Holly Kite. We sparkled too in the field of children's television. Runaround was a double winner. And Wurzel Gummidge, well, he stole all hearts, though not, of course, Aunt Sally's, when he was nominated for the Golden Rose Award of Montreux. And quite right, too. And talking of that pesky old blighter, coming up after the break, Wurzel's hello to the West End. Roger Royal proves that farewells, even from the Bible, can be fun. And Jack Hargreaves goes out of town and into the garden shed he shared with you since 1969. We'll be back. Fiat Superstrada. Inside, it's been restyled with a new dashboard and electronic check panel. Yet outside, the shape is the same. Because the Strada's unique design gives more passenger space. How much more? Well, enough to fit our biggest rival, the Ford Escort, inside. I've got you under my skin. Yet it still costs £694 less than the Escort. The new Fiat Superstrada. More space. Less money. Harry has eight cans of skull. He drinks one himself, then gives one each to Bert and Jack. Then Jim pops in with four more cans, but he's brought Val and Samantha with him, and they all have one each. Then Paul and Malcolm turn up with a couple of friends, and they drink another four. Being a scholar, Harry has calculated that he's still able to enjoy a quiet can of skull and give Samantha one. When you know lager, you're a scholar. Because Christmas goes on much longer than it used to, so does Schweppes in new litre-sized bottles. 
Queensway Super Sale 82, open Friday, New Year's Day. Viscount Double Draw Divan, half price, 200 pounds off these luxury suites. Exclusive Blood and War Unit, half price, and free fitting on giant carpet stocks. Super Choice, Super Value, Super Store. Queensway's biggest ever, Super Sale 82, open Friday, New Year's Day. How will you spend the money you could save with a sovereign or enterprise holiday? More. Water sports? More. Drinks. More. Souvenirs. Book before the 1st of March and Sovereign and Enterprise guarantee absolutely no surcharges. Plus some incredibly low prices and value for money. Book before the 1st of March and get away with a bit more. All over the country, people are turning in early, so they'll be up in time for the winter sale at Debenhams. It's now on. Also open tomorrow, New Year's Day. Another big Bonham bargain. Two suits cleaned superbly. Save one pound. All this week at Bonham. It was Tommy Dockerty a few weeks back who summed up the end of an era by saying as one door closes, another one slams in your face. Well, that's certainly not true for Wurzel Gummidge. He made his last appearance on Southern Television on Christmas Day. But a few days ago, he and Aunt Sally moved out of the country and into the big city, into their own show at the Cambridge Theatre in London's West End. Chris Peacock joined them there. Wurzel, what I really want to know is how did you get into television in the first place? Oh, it wasn't nothing to do with me. No, but it was all due to that Mr. Jan, Jan Peewit. Who's he? And that his name, Jan P Peewit. John Pertwee. Oh, I, that's a fellow, <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he was asked to make this film, film you see. And, and, and it was going to be made into a film, and they asked him if he'd do it. And, and they tried to get it as a, made as a film, but they, and it, nobody would have it. So, so I said, or oh, Mr. Pertwee said, <laughs> <laughs> She said, well, let's have, a, have it written as a telewelly series, you see. So they wrote a blit, and then he'd, he'd, he went on, and Southern Television picked it up. Why do you think Mr. Peewit liked Wurzel Gummidge in the first place? Everybody likes Wurzel. I say people like it. Well, it's a good story. It does everything, isn't it? But he's a pesky old so-and-so, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, people like pesky old so and so. I mean, he sulks. And yeah, they like sulks. Irritable? Yeah, they like them and all. <laughs> <laughs> Has he got Everybody any wants features? to be like that, you see. They? They, they, yeah, you, don't you? Wouldn't you like to say, just, you know, do what you likes and say what you likes and not give a damn about anything? Yes, I suppose I would. Yeah, that's what he That's That's why people like him. Has he got any redeeming features? None. None at all. No, I don't think so. But I he, mean, he, he ain't nice to nobody, really. I mean, them kids, them titchy humans is nice to him. He ain't very nice But he back. loves Aunt Sally. Yeah, but he ain't got no redeeming features, is he, what you said? But why does he love Aunt Sally when she's such an objectionable woman? Because he's stupid. Because <laughs> I'm stupid, that's why. I could have Dolly Clothes Beg if I like. She loves me, but he don't, I don't have her. I don't... I, 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 no, I'm a bit, I'm bit, bit thick in the head. Now, look, I don't know whether Scarecrow's cry, but, but now that Southern Television have been put out to grass... Now, steady, steady. What is going to happen to you, Wurzel? I don't know. It's terrible. They shouldn't have been put out to grass. It ain't right and proper. One of the most popular pro programs on the telly, welly. I don't know why. It seems very stupid then to me that them other fellas don't say, here, come on, Wurzel's gone free. Let's grab him. But they ain't done that up to now. But America likes us, and I think that maybe America is going to have us. And if America show it in America and it's popular, then maybe then they want some more. So maybe it's not goodbye, Wurzel, after all. Oh, it ain't goodbye at all. Because we's in here in the, th the theatre here. What are you holding one finger up for? He's just being rude to you, don't worry about that. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the theatre and we've we got nearly four years. And, we, and in the summer we're going to have Wurzel's barn show and all, everything. You are? Yeah. Do you like being famous? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, especially when them, when them titchy humans comes up and smiles. When you see their beaming faces, it ain't worth, worth make life worth living at that. Wurzel, on this our last programme, have you got a message for the viewers? It's, it's like a death knell, doesn't it? Yeah, no, happy, happy New Year to everybody. And Wurzel lives, OK? Well, here we are. What do you mean, here we are? Where's my little old?
where you and me's gonna live happily ever after, after we marry. This place? You expect me, a genuine York in the Aunt Sally, to live here? Well, what's wrong with it? It'll suit us, it'll do us to a T, it'll suit us, and what's more, it comes red free, it's as cute as, just as cute as cute could be, and it'll suit us. It's a horrible! smells like the pig's style. Disgusting! Wurzel lives <clears throat> while Wurzel moves into town. Jack Hargreaves has been out of town for nearly 23 years, in which both town and country have changed, I imagine, out of all recognition. Hello. In one of these old diaries here, there's a date I shall always remember. 29th of July, 1959, it says, Studio C, Southampton. That was the first time I ever came in contact with Southern Television. I think I was talking about perch fishing. I don't... And, of course, a lot of the kids who might have watched that bit about perch fishing are now grown up with children of their own, and uh, very large numbers of people right across the south of England hardly remember when there wasn't a Southern Television. It started in a very different kind of a place. I can remember there wasn't a single mile of motorway in the whole of the south. There wasn't even a supermarket. Colin Willock, my friend who produces the survival programs actually drove me over to a, out of the area to a place called Isha to see the first supermarket. The whole of the new town of Basingstoke was prime farmland. I remember the argument with the National Farmers Union as to whether it should be built there. But it's all been built since then and in the meanwhile quite a lot of changes in agriculture. For instance there were no Charolais cattle in England. Uh, in the days when Southern Television started, and the heavy horse had pretty well died out. There were only two Shire stallions left in England, but then it got revived, and they're back again, and the whole place grew and bustled and went forward. In the old days, if I had driven from Southampton back through the New Forest in the evening after dark, I would have probably had to dip my lights three times. Now, if I went on that journey, I would never be able to raise them, because the traffic's got so much more, and every single place has developed. If I wanted a mooring in the old days at Limington, all I had to do was to go to John Doe's yard and buy myself an old tractor wheel, fasten a bit of chain to it and a buoy to the top of that and chuck it in the river, and that was my mooring. Nowadays, there's a seven years waiting list. The, the Labour Party in those days, instance, was still led by Hugh Gateskill. Harold Macmillan was a tough politician 
in his prime, I don't think anybody had actually heard of uh, the Beatles, but they quite soon had heard of Barry Westwood, for instance, and the things that the station provided. And now suddenly, after all that change, Southern Television gets retired. It, its voice was known to everybody in the south of England. In fact, I think most of the people would say it really was the common voice of the south of England. And yet now it goes, and for reasons which seem to me not very adequately explained, and apparently without any uh, appeal, I was brought up to believe that in England things happen because the people want them to happen, even if by a roundabout way. But I suppose I can be wrong all my life. Anyway, it was 25 years of great work, and it's something that could be remembered with pride. Thank you, Jack. For the past 21 years, the southeastern part of our region, that's Kent and East Sussex, has been covered from our studios in Dover. Here's Mike Field. Over the years, I've interviewed literally hundreds of people in this studio politicians, publicans, pop stars, painters, and they've all been surprised, surprised on how very small and very friendly it all is. Ever since the studio opened 21 years ago, the hallmark of programmes like Scene South East has been informality. Scene South East started in 1964, and there have been something like 1,000 editions. Its sister programme, Scene Midweek, well, that started four years ago. Now, to give you an example of the friendliness I mentioned, a few years back, we were filming an interview with the Archbishop of Canterbury in London for that night's programme. Unfortunately, our film truck got stuck outside Lambeth Palace, but His Grace came to the rescue. He was being driven back to Kent, made a detour to our studio with the film, and it got on the air. Divine deliverance. We have to admit we've made the odd mistake, like the day in the early 1960s when we turned away from the studio door a group of likely young musicians, they were the Beatles. But we've always had the feeling that we've uh, been looked after up there. I mean, after all, the nightly epilogue guideline is produced from this studio. And one of the regular contributors has been Roger Royal, who went on, of course, to do his own programme for Southern Royal Progress. Five years ago, I first came to this studio in Dover, absolutely terrified, but rather excited to make my first epilogue, or as I like to call them, Holy Horlicks. Now, I knew this was going to boost the viewing figures by at least one, because I'd invited someone in to watch the thing with me. But it was here amongst the kickstart cameras and the cameramen with failing eyesight and the sound technicians who are hard of hearing, and they even gave me an Irish director. I mean, everything was against me. And that I thought up the series Royal Progress. This was to give a new dimension to religious broadcasting, to show that faith could be enjoyed as well as being endured. Now, some people liked it, others loathed it, but at least, you know, we had a go at it. And some success f came from it. I mean, look at Sarah Kennedy. She's game for a laugh now. And who heard of Cliff Richard before he appeared on my show? But it's come to that very sad time-to-go time. And obviously, Dover, the studios here of Southern, have never outstayed their welcome, because from here have come guidelines night after night after night. And the one person who's put in a tremendous amount of work on these programmes is John Barton. And he's helped you, he's stimulated you, he's entertained you with all the ways in which he's portrayed faith as something which is living and our need to care for one another as something that's very important indeed. But saying farewell is very difficult. How do you do it? Do you do it like um, Samson, for instance? You know. He was the man who got that girlfriend, Delilah, who took him round to have a short back and sides. And when his hair went, so did his strength. And he was taken and bound in chains and tied to pillars. And the Philistines mocked him. And he was made a prayer to God. God answered the prayer. He pushed the pillars and the whole lot crumbled down, killing himself and 3,000 people. Now, that, I think, is a little bit excessive as a way of saying farewell. And Actually, these studios, I wouldn't need to push them. I mean, one blow and they'd collapse. Or you could sort of do it the way like um, Elijah. Now, Elijah was always one for the spectacular. I mean, the prophets of Baal had a very bad time with Elijah. And Jezebel, Jezebel, had, she wasn't an easy woman to get on with either. She threatened his life. He also twice um, destroyed the messengers from the king of Samaria. And then... When he said his farewell, he took with him Elisha, just one viewer, 
and went up in a whirlwind supported by chariots of fire with horses of fire. Now, you may think that's going slightly over the top, and I know it couldn't be done here. I mean, the fire hazard would be far too great, and also we haven't got the facilities. You could possibly be a bit more like Moses. Now, Moses, he'd had a difficult time. I mean, he'd put up with pharaohs, he'd put up with being in the bulrushes, he'd cope with the Red Sea, he'd cope with go golden calves, he'd got the Ten Commandments together, and all he did was see the Promised Land. He never quite made it. So, for me, it is a matter of saying goodbye. It's goodbye from Dover, and for me to say thank you to the Dover Studios for all the care they take over religious broadcasting, and they've certainly taken more care of me. To say thank you to you for watching Guidelines night after night, and to wish you God bless, a good night, and a very happy new year. Farming plays a very important part, of course, in our way of life in the South, and one of Southern's first programmes was Farm Progress. That, too, has been produced in Dover and introduced by our longest-serving presenter, Mark Jenner. It's been a good life. Perhaps a little too good. Hang on a minute, hang on. Pigs are wonderful creatures, and it's rightly said of them that a dog will look after you, a cat will look down on you, but a pig will look you straight in the eye. Absolutely true, as I discovered when I started keeping pigs in 1973. They never kept me, and four years and about 2,000 pigs later, we had to part company for purely financial reasons. I also regretfully had to lose the services of my old pig man, Charlie. Now, Charlie couldn't read or write, but believe you me, he knew his pigs. And one little anecdote serves to illustrate the versatility of these animals and Charlie's knowledge of them. We were weighing them one morning when my spectacles fell off. I heard a scrunching noise and I saw the spectacles disappear down the throat of my heaviest hog. And I was very worried, but Charlie reassured me. Don't you worry, Gov, he said. Old pig like a bit of glass. Well, he was, as he nearly always was, absolutely right. Touch of cold comfort farm there. That's about all we've had from you lately, Trevor. Now, this is your very last time to get the weather forecast right for the first time. At least on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mean that. Well, I've been forecasting weather for 19 years uh, at Southern. And Never when got I first it right came, there was snow and ice on the ground. Well, I'm glad we're not going out on that. No, all the snow and ice has gone. It's been a bright day tomorrow, today, and tomorrow's going to be another bright day to start the new year. But there will be a few showers about I'm sure you expected me to say that. I've said it so many times in the past years. But that's the sort of weather's going to be. And the mild weather's going on. The thaw's been continuing all over the British Isles today, but at a slower rate than yesterday's. Now, here's the chart today. Southwesterly, mild winds blowing all over the country. Out on the Atlantic to the west, there's a warm front, which will probably come in tomorrow and bring rain to the west and bring rain to our area probably early on Saturday. So a wet weekend, probably, but a mild one. Now, in the south tonight, there'll be ground frost in most places as air temperatures fall to around 2 degrees centigrade. There was ground frost last night, too. Uh, tomorrow, best temperatures will be about 9 centigrade, similar to today's. And the winds are going to be southwesterly, and they'll be pretty light to force 2 to 4. Tonight's mainly dry, but some showers may come up from the southwest from time to time, some outbreak of rain. Uh, during tomorrow, the same sort of thing, a mainly dry day with a fair amount of sunshine, so it'll be quite a pleasant, or, almost spring-like day. But there will be a few showers developing during the course of the day. Finally, the prospects for Saturday are still mild, but some cloud and probably a lot of rain. And that's all back to Cliff. Well, better luck next year, Trevor. <laughs> uh, Chris. <laughs> It's no coincidence he goes to the Isle of Wight, where all the sunshine is for his holidays. Now, no programme can last as long as day by day without you, the viewers. And you've been particularly loyal to us. For this final programme, we thought we'd give you, the viewer, one last chance to say what you thought about Southern Television over all these years. Oh, yeah, you're on the telly, aren't you? Yeah. I've seen you, yeah. Have you? Yeah. What? You're on the yeah. news, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know yeah. we're all... Um, well, what's all this in You know the, the, the station's changing hands. Well, no, they day don't by day is going to disappear. Oh, they said that. It was a shame. Well, not day by day, is it? They're like, going to go? Seed South East has gone too. Well, that's gone, hasn't it? Are yes. they going to get rid of day by day? Yes. Well, why? I think it's a very homely programme. And I think it covers a lot of interest to a lot of people in a way that BBC's Nationwide does not in this area. Normally at home by quarter to six, watching part of the BBC news, and then switching over to day by day. I like it when he pulls off his head and 
Chasing Who's that, Wurzel? Yeah. What about uh, Day by Day? A lot of people said they missed the passing of Barry Westwood. And he went a long time ago. We, yes, yes, I agree. But when one got used to Cliff, um, he was fine. He'd done the job just as well. Any particular faces that you'll remember? I, I remember them all. I saw you and I recognised you straight away when I came along. Did you? Yeah. Didn't put you off, though? No, I should have. <laughs> I should have. I like it. You feel you, you know that everybody yes, personally. Yes. Any particular faces that are your favourites? Trevor. Um, Trevor the Weather. You're the Trevor yes, Baker yes, fan, yes, aren't you? Yeah, I think you do too. You always get it wrong, that's what I like. Yeah. Will you miss Southern when it goes? Yes. Yeah, because I automatically turn on to it every day. <laughs> you know everything's changing on uh, 31st of December and, in, and day by day is going to disappear. Oh! oh. Well, many of you have written to us expressing the same sort of sentiment, and our thanks to all of you. We've had a telegram, too, from our rivals down the road. It says, regret your unnatural break. Best wishes, your friendly rival, BBC TV South. Much appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. I wrote that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, finally, it's goodbye from us, which, coincidentally, is the title of Southern Television's final programme, taking us from the old and into the new, just before the old year ends tonight. It's a programme we think you'll like, with stars like Grace Kennedy, Cliff Richard, Alec Guinness, Robert Hardy, Cleo Lane, and the Southern people who've been part of your life over the years. The Bournemouth Sinfonietta will be there, too. They are now to accompany the singers the like of which you've never <laughs> accompanied before, or they haven't, anyway. Well, say goodbye from day by day. Hope you've enjoyed our final programme tonight, and for that matter, all our programmes over the years. I'd like to say thank you and goodbye to my mate and friend, Cliff, and say thank you for all he's done for the last 18 months for us. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much, Cliff. Much enjoyed it. We'll leave the day by day team as a whole to say their farewells in song. Well, nearly in song. Nearly in tune to come to that, too. You listen. Now, look at the rest of our New Year's Eve programmes here on Southern. In a moment, Kenneth Williams, Molly Sugden, Nanette Newman, Lonnie Donegan and Gareth Hunt are amongst the guests who will be playing.